Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Rayson. I'm a forest gardener and forest garden designer. And uh, I'm going a bit freestyle this uh, this live stream t today. I'm having a big old rethink about what the process is, what the best kind of way forward is. Uh, during the, the, the forest garden live stream that I do came about because of the lockdown, really, in, in the UK. And so I was just doing a, a live stream of the uh, forest garden course, the, the, the one that I've created, the Backyard Forest, which you can, which is for sale on Udemy at this, <laughs> on the recording I'll put a little link here, which will say a link to the course. And then I've just done kind of random stuff and it's just whatever's taken my fancy. There has been suggestions like on the chat, there's an, a good group of people on the chat and there have been suggestions about uh, doing interviews, which would be good and I'd yeah I'd like to do it but it's, it's a lot of time and this is part of the issue at the moment what I'm really interested in doing is bringing forest gardening to a wider audience and setting up uh, video kind of live streaming video calls with people and discussing and researching it's a lot of time to do that and um, so there's kind of a couple of yeah so that's that's the first thing it's not I don't think it's something it's not something that I actually want to do it'd be interesting but it's not something that I want to do so my focus really is on providing ed educational kind of facilities courses and teaching people and then also um, using the work that I do as an example so I have some designs at the moment I'm just working I've got luckily just got a job working on eco homes and it's landscaping and it's quite straightforward base you know quite basic landscaping lots of lawn and stuff but there is there is potential for future developments but also to showcase what you can do with limited you know in a, in a limited space and with limited resources what is achievable so that's the kind of thing I want to be doing is to say yep this is a, this is kind of forest garden techniques this is wildlife nature <laughs> wildlife gardening but it's wildlife edible gardening and it's low maintenance and it's yep yeah, it involves people in the environment it involves people in their garden in their environment so that's the kind of thing I'd I think I'd rather do so <laughs> this is just like a long way my, oh god I haven't got my I'm gonna do some uh, um, uh, uh, some work in a minute so anyway that's that's my thinking about the set of play for the live stream I'm not I don't really want to take it into doing interviews because it is so much work and I am I have to obviously earn, earn a living as well so the work that I want to do will be designing gardens and then talking about that so that side of it so yeah, I don't know where that leaves. I don't know where that leaves the live streams exactly. My arms are aching because I don't have my uh, my tripod. Um, so yeah, so today, that's uh, uh, yeah. So my my thought is I don't know whether to do like a structured course, but then that'll be kind of just kind of repeating the same thing over and over again. Or whether to do kind of much more informal, you know, this is me going around the garden and this today I'm just doing this and I'm going to be doing this for half an hour. So that's, yeah, it's it's yeah. serving the purpose of putting the word out about forest gardening, what would be most useful? Don't know. So anyway, um, this um, live stream is actually going out for, for, for Pam, just to say, um, yeah, hi Pam, uh, a big shout out to Pam. So... Um, a special dedication. Anyway, <laughs> I uh, yeah, and then there's lots of other projects on the go too. So the other side, the other thing that I'm kind of interested in doing is setting up resources. So there is a forest garden gallery that you will see the the URL will come up here, forestgardengallery.uk, and there's a group of us who've kind of got together from from the from the lockdown live stream who are putting together the gallery and that's great I think it's actually it's a fantastic little project I mean it's all kind of volunteer stuff there's no there's no money in it but that's really really good and it's kind of involving people and showing people what forest garden plants are and then another project that I'm doing this is just starting off the ground is doing a CAD um, doing a CAD plant so like a library of forest garden plants so it's easy for people to do CAD so any designers forest garden designers out there want to use CAD then they can ow my arm is hurting so that's a couple of other other little projects. So what I was going to do today, and I really don't know if this is going to be if this will work or not. 
<laughs> is to show you what I'm, well, the work that I'm doing. So there's, there's Ron, poor Ronnie Barker, the forest garden dog. You right, Ron? And then we've got the pre-vegan chicken. We've got Betty down here. Pre-vegan chicken, you right, Bet? Yeah, very happy. All the animals seem to be losing, losing their feathers and their fur for some reason. I've absolutely no idea why. Anyway, so it's nice just to be able to, to be honest, it's nice to be able to get out in the garden. I've just been writing plant lists and, oh God, it's been a lot of, uh, yeah, putting in proposals and, and yeah, for anyone who, yeah, it's just an awful lot of sitting down at a computer, which is not, <laughs> not what I got into it for. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to show, this is the, the patch that I'm working on. This is what was, was called the blue bean border. And it's kind of what happens if you really don't weed a forest garden. And I think I said this before, if you actually look at what's down here, we've got some, oh, crikey, fireweed. I think it's fireweed, this stuff. <laughs> okay, so um, there's fireweed, there's plantain. Um, and it's kind of, you know, and there's a bit of, then there's some clumps of grass. I'll, I'll, I'll yank them out. But actually what you can see is underneath all of this, there is a lot of, um, Nepalese raspberry and it's done remarkably well. I don't know if Dan's watching today. There's a nettle. So it's actually not that bad. I mean, it looks a bloody mess. It really does. I'm going to move these, um, this is a Asturian tree cabbage and I'll be moving these. So thanks to Chris for the heads up. Oh, there's an oak. There's loads of oak saplings everywhere across the whole of the property. So this winter, I am moving a load of them. I've got to wait for them to die back and then and then move them. Um, oh, here we go. So where is where is the blue bean tree? Which one is it? Is it? Oh, it's this one here. So it's not done. No, it's not done brilliantly well. So this is the blue bean tree, De Cas De Caesnia Fargesii. And it has a big blue bean sausage like fruit and you scrape out the you scrape out the, the flesh, not the actual bean itself. Um, there's a really, really good group called Edimentals and Perennial Vegetables on Facebook. And they've just got loads of information on there. There's a hogweed. There's a, a geranium. Now, I'm, uh, I should be getting better at geraniums, but I'm, but I'm not. <laughs> so, and then over here, you can see there's the Vinca Minor starting to establish. So what I'm going to do is to... Oh, wow, the Nepalese raspberry is done really well. There's an ash. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques. So, one is called scissor weeding. Uh, there's a very interesting podcast I saw the other day. Oh, uh, let me. Larry Weiner, who's a very well known um, landscape garden designer in America, uh, does a lot of. Uh, he does a lot of kind of native planting, native planting, and he was talking about not disturbing the soil. So, what you can do. Let's get this out of the way. So. This is just old twigs. So we've got plantain here, and uh, you know I'm not fussed about plantain to be honest. Is the only reason for, for 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 taking it out is because it's crowding out other stuff. But it's you know, not. It's not like it's not a real major pain in the ass. It's not like grass or anything. So what you can do, you can actually yank it out, way and you pull out the roots. And this is your a ribwort plantain, plantago. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, what is it? I can't remember. Plantago something. Um, really, really common uh, around here. And then you can, yeah, you can chuck that. Just chuck it down. Don't take it to the compost. Just chuck it down somewhere. But then that does actually disturb the. Um, that does disturb the soil. So then there's there's a chance for other stuff to come up. So the other way of doing it. Oops, there's the dog. <laughs> So the other way of doing it is what's called, um, <laughs> it's actually harder to be honest because all the stuff is down here. Let me just show you. So we've got a plantain here. I'm going to do it one handed. 
and there's a slug in there. All right. So the other thing is to, it's called scissor weeding. So you get a pair of scissors, and then you just do that. Yeah. Um, because the ra Nepalese raspberry, which is this one here, is so low growing. This is actually quite. This is actually quite difficult to do. So, um, but you get the idea. Is you're just cutting. You're just cutting it back there, and then just leaving. Just don't even bother clearing the leaves up. Yep. Um, uh, and that is it. I mean, it's messy, but it's actually, it's actually uh, uh, really, really easy to do. And what that does is to leave the nutrients in place, leave the roots in place. It will grow back. But what the idea is that the Nepalese raspberry will actually just kind of swamp it out. So you're just giving the Nepalese raspberry a chance. Um, and so much of this has to do with what you think. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know, it looks scruffy. So much of a garden is kind of oh, how we think about gardening now is based on how it looks. Whereas actually... <laughs> I really need a garden for how it feels and yeah is to pay much more attention to how it how it feels and how it works not to say that it can't look good as well but um, I think aesthetics has got a lot to answer for this is uh, the fruit from a Nepalese raspberry they kind of this is only a couple of little berries that they do tend to fall apart so Mm. It tastes nice. Um, and then this is the flower. It's very mild here as well. So, and then I planted this up all sorts of stuff. This is um ground ivy. Now ground ivy is lovely. It's this is kind of deciduous. The Nepalese raspberry is evergreen, whereas the ground ivy is deciduous and it kind of does die back, so it does look a bit messy in the winter. Uh, what you can do is to grow it with strawberry. I don't think I've got any kicking around here at the moment. Um, and then the, yeah, they kind of they, they kind of complement each other. Um, other stuff like I've got here, it's just some grass and I will take grass out, I won't try and chop and scissor weed grass just because grass is a, you know, it'll just get established and it'll just spread and then you and I will compost, I will take that off otherwise it'll just grow, grow back so and what is interesting, what I find really interesting is I've got a real aversion to grass, oh there's a big old chunk of Nepalese raspberry. I've got a real aversion to grass because there's just so much of it and it just kind of it kind of creeps everywhere and takes everything else out. Uh, but actually <laughs> grass is a really really interesting interesting kind of uh oh, what do you call them family? No. Oh what the, the the one above the order or whatever it is. They're really interesting because there's a whole load of different ones and just, just rather than a, a kind of rye grass, see I don't even know what this is, I'd imagine it's some uh, possibly dwarfing rye grass, which is like a common, I don't know, I really don't know, that's not, not my speciality, but there are a whole range of different grasses with very, be quite beautiful uh, flowers and different, different forms and I've been looking at them using them in an ornamental garden, native UK grasses but in an ornamental garden. So this is the, uh, this is known as Pam's Wall, uh, which is, it's going to be a mound, so I'm gradually adding to it, and here I'm de-turfing. I'm actually going to shifty these around a bit, so I'm going to use wood chip for the path, and then um, bark for the, for the ground cover. Mostly because wood chip kind of beds down easier. Um, but bark lasts longer, so in my experience, bark doesn't decompose as quickly as, 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 as wood chip. So I kind of like to use bark as a ground cover, and then wood chip for paths, and then top up the wood chip paths every every year. It's Betty doing her chicken thing. So what I was going to do now was just to um, how are we doing for time? Because yeah, it's already caught for now. What I'm going to do now is just to yeah, I'll do a bit of quick bit of deturfing and get cracking on it, um, and then. The next, 
<laughs> well, the other thing that I'd love to do, what I will be doing, is to go around the garden and say, okay, what jobs need to be done? And then do a list of, list of, list of jobs in order, because there is just so much to do in terms of deturfing and narrowing the paths and removing plastic sheet mulch and putting in ground cover and etc etc there's all this stuff and just have a plan of action and then do one bit at a time when you can do it so here the original plan was to have this as a grass path but the problem with that this is a kind of perennial well vegetable beds here which are starting to transform <laughs> into something else altogether and uh, they were they will still be growing potatoes but they're becoming more and more perennial so i've actually only got a couple of beds in here which are yeah which are which are which are annual vegetables but potatoes are all be growing potatoes and then up further up if you can just about see the sheet mulch that will be the peren the new perennial veg area for the the perennial vegetables the um i got some perennial leeks from from Alison at backyard larder and the potato onions as well from her and oh elephant garlic and so that's up up that bit and i'll be shifting stuff around but what i do 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 want to do is to get rid of plastic because you know I, on the course i say well you know you can use you can use it as a temporary sheet mulch but it's bloody plastic and it just doesn't go anywhere so i just really want to kind of get away from using it so i will be getting rid of this this is like around the, the original raised beds which are not so much raised anymore they've taken the sides off and I will be replacing all those. So what I will do with the grass as well is to, I'm going to get, get rid, I'm going to put wood chip all the way down here, deturf that entire lot because the problem is that grass will just grow that way. So unless there's ground cover in these beds, the grass will just, shump, it will move over. As you can see, it's, you know, it's already doing it. So yeah, get rid of the grass here. Um, so that's exciting and then this is all a bit of an experiment I just put a whole load of different things in here and uh, there's some self heal which has come up which is just which is great so I'll leave that bit of clover I'll leave the clover um, is that sweet Sicily oh, I can't remember there's some sort of Sicily's thing and a fever few which he wants to get established a bit of grass the grass can come out um, and this was going to be some kind of extension of the, the vegetable Bed. so I've got some celery which has done really badly obviously I just kind of ignored it and there's some malva some mallow uh, kind of geranium doing its thing some calendula that I put in and I'll just come in here and, and I'll weed out the stuff that I don't want to be but to be honest I'll leave an awful lot in there and then I'll try I think what I'm trying what I'd like to do get the ground cover established it's mostly ground ivy get rid of this grass and then start putting in well-established perennial vegetables so for example the, the malva that i put in pretty sure that is a, a mallow um isn't wasn't particularly well established i'm not terribly sure which one it was it might have been chinese mallow which is a kind of annual really but um it's to put well-established plants in and see how they and see then they can cope with the ground cover so up here i've got some <laughs> oh yes absolutely hammered this is annie annie kelsey she sent me some um <laughs> perennial uh kale i don't know which one it is and i've got some sorrel over here uh, and then just to put in like big old pot grown perennial vegetables and put them in and see how they get on because then they can deal with the with the uh, with the ground cover and basically leave this ground cover because there's some i can't remember what the name of this is this is beautiful actually it's um blood sorrel or something blood sorrel so it's, it's a this a sorrel of sorts um bit tough but looks beautiful uh and then just take take stuff out there's meadow sweet and sweet sicily meadow sweet there um yeah and then get the plants in once the ground cover is established uh, and then on this side <laughs> Oh dear, this all needs to be weeded. There's some there's some jostaberry cuttings in amongst there. And I'm gonna take the um take the creeping buttercup and move that and then use that as a ground cover next to the polytunnel. So that's all that's all the kind of work that I've got to do. Um is it actually worth watching me do a bit of work? How exciting is that? I don't know. Maybe this will be a, a feature.
watch me work. It's nice to come out though, it really is. There we go. So, how's that? <laughs> This probably won't work just because um, it's not really going to work because I, I can't actually talk. You won't be able to hear me from all the way over there and I'm not going to shout at the microphone. And I don't have a, 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 USB, a USB microphone that I could use, um, a remote one. Oh, I, whilst I'm here, actually, I will show you. Let me just spin this around. Oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. So this is a Tuna Sinensis, to be honest. It was really knackered this, earlier on this year. Uh, the drought, didn't like the drought and haven't used it very much. So um, I'll just show you this first of all. This is chop and drop. Now, I know everyone knows chop and drop mulching. So you've got your scissor weeding, which is scissor weeding is when you, um, the one I showed you where you just chop the top off of uh, plantain or dandelions or something. And they'll, they'll come back, but they'll be, get weaker and weaker. It's just a thing that you do. And then you've got a chop and drop mulch. So by every fruit tree and every kind of tree that demands a lot of uh, nutrients, this is the this is the chop and drop mulch. So this is comfrey. Um, which one is it? Symphytum, Symphytum, Crikey Moses. It's a Russian comfrey. It's a kind of cross, ex uplandicum, and uh, this is Bocking 14. But to be honest. Yeah, it's got the highest nutrients and, you know, in, in tests, it's got the highest nutrients and the most potassium of any comfrey. But to be honest, any comfrey, yeah, any comfrey will do. Uh, the bees love it and the slugs love it and um, sure it supports lots of different insects. But there are about two or three species of comfrey that are native. So, Symphytum, oh Christ, I can't remember what they are. Symphytum tuberosum. Symphytum officinalis, I think is native, and the pos and another one as well, can't remember. But they all do, the, you know, you can do the same thing, which whatever comfrey you've got, you can have an ornamental comfrey, and then you can use that ornamental comfrey in the same way. So you don't have to use, this is quite a big, these get up to like a metre and a half, metre, a metre and a half or so, um, and they flop everywhere, and then they'll go, hold on, can I show you? Oh yeah, here we go. So. What happens with comfrey a lot is that you'll get um, uh, uh, mildew on the on the leaves. They like a bit of a damper spot, so if they're in a, they're in a, if they get at all dry, they'll get they'll get mildewy leaves, which doesn't look very nice, but but still whatever. Um, and then what you do, you just chop them back. Um, like that. <laughs> And then just put them around the base of the tree. And that really is it. Yep. And that, that is the mulching. I'll, that is the mulching that you do. It's the second time I've done it this year. Tidy. There we go, and that's that. It's not, you know, that's it. That's messy, <laughs> but that is then feeding the. Um, that'll decompose slowly, and that will feed the tuna sinensis, the Chinese cedar. Um, yeah, and then that also acts as a mulch, so it kind of keeps the keeps the stuff you don't want down. Now, what you do with tuna sinensis is you can use a tender shoot. Let me show you here. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, I guess oh, is that in focus? So you get the tender shoots, and you can eat them. Um, oh, they've got this really complex flavour. 
it's like eating um, it's like eating soft garlic slightly dusty lettuce <laughs> have I sold it to you uh, and the trees they're, they're very when they get going this isn't this is it's because it's not being protected when they get going they need to be they need to be kind of uh, pollarded every year so just take it down right <laughs> just take it down to around about take it down to around about here but it, uh, this is all right this isn't this this, this is this is fine so this will be protected by uh, by Pam's wall. So that's on one side, and you've got the wind coming up the valley, and that will add protection for for that for the for the um, for that tree, and that will do a lot better. Then I might as well eat the rest of that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's good. I got out of doing any work. I'll just do a quick bit of um. Deturfing. That's me there. I've got shame at all. Now, Chris has mentioned um, there's a tool that you can get called a. Christ, what is it called? I have a, a, a knackered old um, deturfing, a uh, kind of turf cutter, edger which is like a semicircular thing there i just use that um it's not massive area so it's not like a you know i'm not going to be doing it for well, forever and ever but chris did mention a a tool which you kind of it makes it moving it much easier it's kind of slightly angled it's like an it's like an angled spade um with a flat flat angled space it's much much easier to get the turf out so I might invest, yeah, I'll have a look, see if I, see if I get one. Because I do actually want to move quite a bit of turf. Um, and then I just chop it in strips, I'll show you. So you just grab the... Hold on, that way. Go. It's quite. It's slow. Spade. Yeah, just way. Uh, and the downside is you're removing a lot of the nutrients as well because it's like the top the top layer so you kind of want to take off as least amount of uh, soil as you can um, and yes you do remove nutrients so yes you know put a mulch on the top uh, and then once you're done <laughs> once you spent a happy couple of hours doing that I get some bark and just put a bark mulch on and put in some ground cover plants. I've got a load of what you can do. I'll show you actually. Is you can use existing ground cover. So should be using a trowel really. So what you can do is just take, I've just taken out a, a clump of um, ground ivy from an existing patch in the center. And then the ground ivy will kind of swallow up the patch in the center. Uh, and I'll just plant that in the middle of the patch that I've done. So you're just kind of reusing the ground cover that you have.
There we go. There we go. Oh. That was messy. Right then, so. Oh, the part about the tree. Oh, uh, the, the name of the tree, so yeah, the name of this is in the chat. The name of the tree is Tuna Sinensis, T-O-O-N-A-S-I-N-E-N-S-I-S, -O -O -N -N -S -S -S, Chinese cedar. It is neither Chinese nor a cedar. Uh, there we go, right then. That's all the work that I can do. <laughs> nice five minutes bit of work each, each day. I'm gonna collapse that, so I'm gonna head back in inside and grab a cup of tea and uh, do that so yeah i'll go and show i'll go and show you the, the thing so this is you know this is how you can spend many a happy hour um i'll just show you the the ground cover so already the dandelion is coming back so that's the ground ivy that i put in that's deturfing and it'll take an hour half an hour or so to remove the rest of that put in some I'll put some bark in and then what I'm going to do here is weed everything first of all uh, get the grass out and there's a bit of bramble and nettles and get that out of the way and then I'm going to put the uh, paths in to make it much more like probably with some sticks to be honest I don't know just to make it really really obvious how to get in there and that area then will be I'll move the cabbage and this area will become much more of a um, much more of a soft fruit area. So I've got some red currants that I, that I can put in there and some white currants. Uh, there's a black, couple of black currants in there already. But I think make it more, uh, more, more soft fruit because it gets good light and it's got more protection. So um, that'll be the soft fruit area. And then the, this will be the veg area up here. This is the cornice, cornice red, red cornice dogwood. Uh, going a beautiful colour for the autumn. Uh, and then that's... Uh, Brachioglottis senecchio, uh, which is not a native. Um, recommended by Martin Crawford. Martin Crawford's um, funny actually, because he's not really into his native plants. I mean, it's, it's, there's so much to be into. He's, he's just not particularly into them, I don't think. Whereas I, I like my native plants. I'm gonna put the legs up, which is why it's all wobbling around. Um, so yeah, that's a whole other, whole other topic. There's another fantastic, um, there's a podcast called Growing Greener by Thomas Christopher. And uh, he has some really, really interesting people on there. I mean, Doug Tallamy, he's done a couple of them. Doug Tallamy's brilliant. He's an entomolo he's a entomologist, insect man. But he, he's really into native gardening and what you can do to help, help insects and help wildlife. And uh, there's another chap they had on, Dan Jaff. J A F F E, who's brilliant, and there's another one as well whose name I can't remember. Who's talking about native? Well, there's one about native. One guy's running a native plant nursery. Dan Jaff is like a landscape designer, and he uses native plants and oh, it's great. He uses native plants in design in in the design, and he talks about edible landscaping, and he doesn't even he doesn't even mention forest gardening, which is quite funny. But it's it's kind of right up that that street. So just like this, I mean, this is looking a bit scruffy, but this is the, uh, there's some comfrey and um, some rhubarb and a gooseberry. So that gooseberry will get quite a bit bigger. That's prime gooseberry spot. There is an old, um, it's, a, it's a present from a friend. It's a fruit tree on a dwarf fruit stock. And I put it in a place without, uh, I don't think the soil was any good. So. I'm not sure if it's alive or not. You can tell if it's alive. Oops, there we go. That's just about alive. Hmm, jury's out on that one. That might have to get rid. That should be green. I think it's on the way out. I think so. That's an apple tree. I'm gonna draw a fruit stock. I've got another apple tree over there that I'll put in, which I picked up cheap at the garden center. But this is just like an example of, um, you know, it's native as uh, ground ivy and a country's kind of native. Is rhubarb a native plant? I don't know. So, yeah. There we go. Anyway, I shall, 
<laughs> oh yeah, the mini wheelbarrow. That's um, that's a present from some neighbours. Maddock runs around with that. There we go. Mini wheelbarrow and a knackered old wheel wheelbarrow. I'm going to go in and start the Zoom meeting and a cup of tea. So, um, there we go. Hope <laughs> all a bit made up. Hope that was kind of vaguely interesting and mildly useful. I, um, yeah, I shall see you if you want to come into Zoom meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll leave the chat open. If any, I don't know if anyone can anyone else put in the uh, Zoom link and the password into the chat. So if there's anyone else who's watching, I have no idea who, but if there is anyone else who's watching, then they can join if they want. Okay, I shall see you in a second.